Welcome to the Rachel Varga Podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Varga, double board certified aesthetic nurse specialist since 2011 with over 20,000 rejuvenation procedures performed. I'm an international clinical trainer for other physicians and nurses as well, celebrity skin expert, having been featured on some of the world's top proactive aging podcasts and much, much more. Learn more at rachelvarga.ca and enjoy today's episode. Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to today's live recording here on the Rachel Varga podcast. In today's episode, we are discussing how the rejuvenation centers of the future look, where we are now, and what is coming in regards to technology and care. This is a topic that is near and dear to my heart, especially with my paper that I am in the process of publishing which talks all about environmental toxins in air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, mitigation strategies, the future that I foresee for mitigating these things and how we can better have an awareness in rejuvenation clinics. And then when we're talking to J.R. Burgess today, who basically creates integrative clinics, how we can weave the two together for more potent and powerful outcomes. The skin is the largest organ of the body. It tells us a lot about what's going on and the skin should absolutely be part of the assessment piece in any type of clinical model. And of course, what we talk about here is not medical information. It is educational information only. If you think you have a health condition, you must seek the guidance of a licensed physician also before making any lifestyle modifications. Let me tell you a little bit about today's guest. J.R. Burgess is a returning guest. I love what he's doing in the space of franchising clinics and teaching clinicians, because that's also what I do with my rejuvenationtraining.com work. J.R. Burgess found his purpose for helping people be free from pain at a young age. As a healthcare consultant, he regularly shows his commitment through transparency, communicating, and being vulnerable on how he has overcome a life of physical and emotional pain. He credits regenerative, functional, lifestyle, energetic, and plant medicine as key components in his transformation. In his relentless pursuit of personal and professional growth, JR has played an integral role in replicating a proven integrated model of care in more than 100 clinics worldwide. Each clinic aims to redefine healthcare empower medical leaders and patients to co-create health and impact the world. He is driven to make the greatest contribution he can by changing the way healthcare is delivered by implementing restorative medicine protocols, medical marketing and sales, practice management, and medical leadership development. Medical professionals and patients need and deserve the time to listen, connect, and co-create a transformative plan of care together. JR is a husband, father of four, three time number one best selling author, and international speaker, and returning guest here on the Rachel Barker podcast. Very excited to have JR Burgess back on the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you today? And what is new and exciting since we last connected? Oh, thank you so much for having me back, Rachel. It's an absolute honor. The work that you're doing, bridging the gap of how things are done now to what's possible in the future to impact humanity and do good medicine and good work out in the world. And, you know, we're kindred souls in that regard. So thank you. It's an honor. Um, What's new and exciting is I'm present. I'm connected with my family. Um, I've regained my health compared to years of operating potentially out of full alignment. Um, And that's kind of what's important for me now. And that has led to, you know, having a second opportunity in life to do something a little bit differently on a a very grand level that is in alignment to my family, to me, to our patients, to these business models that truly, you know, add the missing piece that that wasn't there in the, the last model of licensing and franchising I did to impact humanity on an even greater level. 
thank you so much for doing this work. We really need people like you out there opening clinics with this type of vision of a more integrated model. When we look better, we feel better. When we feel better, we look better. So sometimes this whole rejuvenation business isn't as superficial as you might think, especially with pain. Oh my gosh. After being in two car crashes, completely changing my life around, I love seeing more of these specialized pain clinics popping up, doing more types of innovative uh, practices and protocols and continuing to advance. And I feel like the aesthetics world has sort of been a little bit stalled and has really been into this whole cookie cutter approach, offering packages for rejuvenation. That's become the norm a cookie cutter type of 15 minute consultation with a consultant to basically sell packages of lasers and things like that. There's so much missing in the aesthetic space, which is really what I'm aiming to disrupt with my paper. And I'd love to hear your take on this, J.R. Burgess. Are you seeing the dermatology world wanting to learn more about the benefits of integrative medicine modalities and technologies for powerful outcomes and long-term benefits. What's happening in the playing field right now? Yeah, and the playing field is, I think a lot of people have recognized with what's happened in the world the last few years that they may have a great focus, but people are not happy or as healthy or addressing all the components, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, internal, to necessarily have the greatest potential health, happiness, and to feel and look good, like you mentioned. So like, what can we do that is missing in that, that model of care that is aligned with our soul? And to me, that is waking up. I'm going to be partnering with a, the largest dermatology conference out there to begin to bridge that gap of where are the, the conventional models of aesthetics and dermatology to what is completing that spectrum. And I think most um, conventional models of care recognize we need more. And they're seeing like, okay, when we look at lifestyle medicine, what we put on our skin, um, how we manage stress, how we eat and how we move each day or how we're, you know, being in nature and taking care of our body. That's like that first bridge that most people will agree with. But that next bridge is like, well, there's more. What if you do have mold toxicity? What if you are, you know, your hormones are out of balance. What this is impacting this, even if we do all those things, it's difficult or the cravings are high. How do we do that? But I don't know that or, or what, that's not my training and background. And what we're seeing is collaborations with health coaches to deliver that lifestyle or collaborations with practitioners that have that background that want to be a part of something that has that full circle. So we're seeing collaborations, teams, people that recognize it can't be done on our own. You can't be the expert in everything, but how do we have win, win, win collaborations that allow us to be in alignment with, we do great work here and it's impacting our patients' lives in a big way. What I find really fascinating about all of this is as a practitioner myself, you know, doing everything right, biohacking my air, water, lighting, electromagnetics, living healthily, using clean products for years, However, the home I used to be in, I knew I just had to leave. Mm -hmm. And little did I know, I did a, um, a heavy metal pesticide and mold toxicity test. And mercury, lead, and pesticides and mold were actually really high. I took this test a couple months ago and for the last few months I've just been detoxing quite a bit. And while I was writing my paper, I actually got my results, this paper on environmental stressors. So for those of you listening who are practitioners yourself or who are parents or who have others really depending on you for different things, it's really important that we do put our oxygen mask on first. And a lot of us behind the scenes that are practitioners or like yourself, Jer Burgess, who are rolling out integrative um, clinics, we've had to do it a little bit in almost I'd say the word kind of stealth mode. And this is what we're all talking about behind the scenes, environmental toxins, integrative modalities for reducing inflammation, slowing aging, reducing pain, all that. And now what's really cool is we're all coming together, sharing these strategies that works with now these larger 
dermatology world conferences, which, you know, I'll probably be presenting my paper at. Mm -hmm. What is that like for you to see that there's so many more of us coming forward and seeing the benefits of the body, mind, spirit energy to really help us be our brightest versions? It gives me great excitement, Rachel, because I was part of the, the the top volume regenerative medicine center in the country. So we had a 28,000 square foot integrated center and it involved lifestyle medicine, functional medicine, um, regenerative aesthetics. So everything from the facials, the hair, the PRP, the exosomes, you name it, um, PT, everything integrated. And at the same time, I was coming out of a play, running masterminds. We were licensing our model all around the world, training doctors. And slowly but surely, it's like my wife was taking care of the kids. I was building businesses and feeling like I was called to change healthcare. But at the end of the day, I came back from a, a conference 10 years, old, 10 years into it. And I feel like I'm having a heart attack in front of my children in my living room. So I had pushed so hard and been in like goal minded and achievement minding and having all these, these healthcare clinics, but yet I was out of alignment, working hundred hour work weeks, sick, pushing through grinding, just as you saying, not putting that oxygen mask over my face and really looking at what I could do internally. And basically after going through that two years of negotiating is I had to sell out and I had to go on a four year healing journey internally to really address the spirit, the emotions. Why was I trying to get approval based on all my childhood traumas or family things that were swept under the rug or injuries and what we're seeing shifting right now or people are becoming aware that I have to worry about me first. So there's what I call consumer speak and then there's internal operation speak. So it is energy. If your body battery is dead, how do you jumpstart another person? So like my wife, it's like she wants to give and serve our children. But at the end of the day, if she's not taken care of, how do you jumpstart our children? Emotions. Are we sweeping these things under the rug? Are we really going to face them? Are we really going to come to peace with them? Whether that's through forgiveness, seeing them, letting go, or only going forward and up. Like that's the real work. And then there's the environment, everything that you talk about. The home, what's in the, uh, the work environment, the skin, what you're putting in your body, that's so critical. And then that next phase is you. So like we have to have the self-discipline to what we put in our body. We have to have the self-discipline and courage to face it, to not blame the world, whether it's the government, our relatives, our family, our coworkers, our community. And we have to be willing to show up and be like, I am can do my thing. And that's what's going to determine. I am I am the, the controller of my game, this reality. And if I visualize exactly what I want and I take the steps, nobody's going to get in the way, just like any entrepreneurial or healing journey. There, there's a roller coaster ride that we're all going to be on called life, but we got to own it. And that's kind of like the operating is it used to be logic, system, business, follow this protocol. And I'd recognize we'd get the businesses some success, but each person that if the, the, the clinic was going to have the greatest impact, the owner had to raise their vibration, their frequency, their healing. So if you want the greatest outcome, we have to have a you plan to have the, the greatest potential impact. And people want the systems, the logic, and let's, let's bridge the gap. Fantastic. Just speaking my language. Sounds like you went through the wounded healer situation. <laughs> Absolutely. And you may not know this about who you go and see for your care, for those of you listening, for your rejuvenation, the wounded healer. And I heard JJ Virgin and some other people, because this is how we're connected through um, a healthcare collaborative with other health practitioners who are really working to innovate and inspire and educate and all these things. And whenever you get a whole bunch of practitioners together, one thing always happens. This, this topic comes up of the wounded healer. So for us to show up and be our brightest versions and share our gifts of care, we got to do the inner work too. So when you work with a practitioner who's gone through 
the uh, psychological behavioral work like so like J.R. Burgess was doing, which you very, very eloquently described, it, it's really important to work with practitioners that have gone through things and that can empathize and support you on a more deeper emotional and spiritual level as well. It's All been right. a, a brutal journey. So Good. like going through that process, but on the other side of it, to be present with my family, to be teaching from values and not rules, things that we don't like as, as a children, to be able to show up in your business and in your personal needs and with your family, your loved ones and community, this is what I call good medicine. When everybody around you is benefiting, every conversation you have, having intention, just like you did a beautiful, you know, before we came on intention of like, what are we attempting to do in every conversation? How do we put the intention of doing good in every engagement, workers and everything like that? We're coming from our spirit, from the highest potential and purpose when we take that pause and put that energy into every decision that we choose to be present in. Wonderful. And this is something that I do see in some, especially health entrepreneurs, is they have like very leaky systems, right? So for you, you, ha you went through that, you experienced that. So you're setting other people up and other clinics up so that they don't have that, so that they have that work-life balance because we can't just give 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 all the time mm -hmm. as healers and practitioners we really have to fill up our own cup as, as well otherwise you know it's going to get empty and dry and crack and all these things so it's really great um, sharing your experiences so that you're creating rock solid clinics that it's not just about the patient-centered care which of course is number one it's also looking at the health um the practitioners themselves so that they have long and fruitful careers and are always inspired to learn and innovate. What are the three perception changes that have had the greatest impacts on your health and well-being? So the first and foremost, and, and I'm trained in multiple modalities from NLP to motivational interviewing to, you know, even indigenous teachings and, and practices is the first thing in order to help ourselves and to help as many people, how do you put people into cause versus effect? And our language matters. It's most of us operate subconsciously based on our upbringing and some of the things that have happened in our life. So it's a, it's a skill of listening to what the subconscious is saying. And it's basically, if I'm saying I don't want something or they did this and that, versus when I listen to people is I can see if they're ready to make change. So I'm protecting my energy. So energy is like the, the life force of life, right? So we need that to go through and be balanced or at least be successful in the areas of personal, family, business. So, you know, cause would be like, here's what I'm going to do. Effect is going to be somebody's got a, a reason outside of them why they can't grow. So the perception of the minute I'm getting triggered by somebody or that I have any excuse whatsoever. I say, what do I want first and foremost? And then how do I see what their intention is? So like, are they speaking, even if they're coming out with me with frustration or anger, like what is their highest intention? So pausing a little bit and being like, do I a just need to listen to this person because they need to express B can I offer perspective to help this situation? I used to just give, give, give my energy, like many healers, right? Give, give my energy. And somebody may not even be open. So can I offer you a perspective? Or third, how can I support you? But if you tell people what to do, they may not be even hearing it or grabbing it. So I see people that are in effect and I simply ask how to get them in cause. And sometimes it's just listening so they can let those emotions go. Sometimes it's, can I offer perspective or how can I support you? And if they don't know how you can support them, then they're not ready yet anyways. So it's, it's this little subtlety that has protected my energy from trying to help and heal and be a value to be seen um, to where I just pause and I'm, I'm understanding their mindset, their brain and how I can, or if I can even help. 
Yeah, it's interesting you say that. One of the things that I teach, because I teach other doctors, nurses, and their aesthetics team, how to consult with their clients, how to create the plan, and obviously deploying rejuvenation of procedures in the clinic that I do at rejuvenationtraining.com. Now, what's really interesting is before I used to follow the model that, you know, the big pharmaceutical companies were telling us to follow, that they were providing at these conferences talking about their products and things like that. And they were giving us all these consultation tips. And then I thought to myself, wow, I really actually don't want to have any of this information in my mind because it's essentially a program to be a practitioner that's all about sales and all about reading a script. So then people go from clinic to clinic and they get the exact same information. And what I started to do was listen much more. So instead of doing a free 15 or 30 minute consultation, I was actually one of the first aesthetic nurses in Canada to charge for a whole hour. And now my consultations are about 75 minutes. And a lot of that is listening. I'd probably say upwards of 60 to 70% of the consultation is listening. When you listen to what someone's going through, you can pick up on all of these subtleties. And then it can actually enhance your care instead of just, you know, I hate to use this terminology, but word vomiting your script of how you decide to care for people each and every time and have it be cookie cutter. It's going to be really boring and everyone has unique needs. Now, when you were mentioning something, uh, talking about what you were doing in the clinic as a provider and practitioner, you said uh, PT. Now, were you alluding to peptides that you'd also been using? Um, physical therapy. Oh, physical therapy. Okay, yeah, got it. Dramatic modalities, um, lots of different techniques physically to, to move energy mm -hmm. or to, you know, systematically or PT usually focuses on one area, looking at the whole connective chain to align with the person's goals. Like, are they trying to be an athlete or a gardener? What are they, they doing? And, you know, most people only see this narrow focus, but when we're talking integrative care, it's, a, again, listening enough to see the whole picture of, of what's going on. And like we talked about the end of protecting your energy, we, you know, the Bible verses teach somebody how to fish for themselves when they are agreeing to something versus just being vomited on. That's part of the pathway to healing, you know, so we got to accept what our path is. Absolutely. The, re the reason I, I picked up on that PT, because there's some peptides that actually mm. start with that. And we're seeing peptides still fringe. However, we're seeing it a lot more in what I would consider innovative longevity types of clinics. Yeah. So, and that's to your point right there. It's like there's a in our energy for life centers, there's the internal what I talked about of like language that our consumers ain't, aren't necessarily familiar and then there's a, a system that we put together from an integrated perspective no matter which modalities people believe in that people need structure and a plan to look at this whole being so step one for us is to detect this could be done with advanced lab testing gut testing heavy metals testing food sensitivity genetic blood labs energetic reads um, frequency, emotion. There's many technologies now, depending on how woo or energetic one wants to get that can measure or detect even like muscle testing. So that's like, and we're also detecting language from the NLP aspect that I, I, I mentioned right there. So what their subconscious script and story is, then there's correct. These are things like the peptides, hormones, regenerative medicine, exosomes, micro, you know, dermabrasion, lasers. These are things that are correcting whatever one wants fixed. And then there's protect, which we look at as preventative medicine, the grabbing the rope themselves. I'm going to protect my health by eating better, by not being in toxic relationships or environments. And if a person isn't willing to put on their own oxygen mask, I, I'm very, you know, loving with them and being like, we can take you so far but unless you have the self-discipline or participating in your health, then we can only go so far. So many practitioners feel like they have to be healers. And that's a lot of pressure. And doesn't mean we don't have a skill or a specialty where we can guide people. But the pressure is going to come off the minute you can realize, like, 
I can take them so far. And you heard my intro is we have to co-create health and they got to step up and show up. And then I get to be compliant, not salesy, not like forcing them, but like, Hey, you're not following the full three-step systems. How do I support you with the nutrition side or the movement side or the skincare side? So we can get there. So it's more of a, a commu- looking at the system and being in constant communication of how they can take ownership of their health journey. And I feel when we have time and space in that in integrated clinics, the pressure is just off and we're truly a, a coach, a guide, a resource. And we have these cool technologies and detection mechanisms to really change lives. I love this. I love nerding out on the tech side of things. I've gotten my hands over, I think it was a two, three year period, the top quote unquote lasers out there. Some of them are just awful in regards to, you know, really painful, a lot of downtime, just not the expected outcomes that you would hope for. And then there's other tech that's so much better So I have a very short list of tech I like to suggest for my clients seeking skin rejuvenation and then where to go and, you know, the whole plan around that. Now, when we're talking about technology, this is perfect segue into this question. Technology investment in rejuvenation clinics or longevity or wellness clinics can range anywhere from 150 to a million dollars for lasers and other supplies for rejuvenation. What are some key technologies to look for? in a clinic that you think is on the right track? How, what are some tips to give the consumer out there, the the client out there, who's trying to look for a clinic to care for them? What are some of the things to look for? And then maybe what are some of the warning signs in regards to tech and options they might have? So what I'm looking for, and you alluded to it earlier, is somebody that's been on the healing journey themselves. They haven't had to maybe have the whole hero's journey and overcome it, but somebody that understands mind, body, spirit practices, because it is a whole being. Somebody may need support a little more in one area than the next, but that they they see it and that they're open if they don't have that. We don't have to do it all to be able to pass the ball. And we're taught to compete in sports. And it's just like, I have the whole solution versus I love rugby and I'm a scrum half. I love passing the ball to other experts that can fill in the entire being's need. Um, So somebody who can listen five and 10 minute appointments and that don't have the follow-up and the integration or the coaching component to be able to guide somebody through that may not have 15 years of integrative medicine experience is important. Education is a big part of that or that they're guiding you to the trusted resources that can complete that whole picture. So I love education and I love community. So these clinics that either have, just like you're doing here, you're creating community, come follow Rachel, learn and listen. She's bringing you the education and each conversation, there's a pearl within it that now don't just look at knowledge, go implement these things that we each need to do for our health. Not having somebody else try to save you because a practitioner is only the guide, like we just talked about, something that you're going to do in your home um, that, that makes a difference. And as far as technologies, I am I love being a human guinea pig. So I, I have to embody, and I can't sell anything that I don't do, that I haven't tried, that I haven't experienced it. And on the emotional side, I'm liking some of these technologies that many of them can recharge your body, in, enhance cellular health. But I truly believe the, the, the root cause is the emotional, the traumatic, the experiential belief systems that we have. So if you're not where you want to be, we got to change our strategy and, and face some of those things. So some technologies are like aura rings, right? When we talk of detect or, you know, Garmin watches as some can detect what's going on in your body. And I love that. But there's new ones that, you know, the company that I'm partnering with that actually can detect, but also correct through ancient principles and Chinese medicine things to actually slow your pulse and your nervous system to have an app alert right away and saying, hey, your body battery's low. Let's get you into one of these centers so you can get under the near and infrared light so you can, you know, we see your heart rate value or your nervous systems in constant flight or flight. How do we practice things to get you calm, whether it's 
20 different devices can calm your nervous system. So it's like, I don't want to be too, you got to do this device. It's just working with somebody that knows how to calm that nervous system. So there's different technologies that can do that. And you can also learn breath work to be able to calm your own nervous system. And I see Rachel, and I love following people um, that I, that inspire me. She's in the water. She's in the, the waterfalls in there and learning how to breathe through that and condition her nervous system to do it. So technology is wonderful, but nature's just as wonderful to get in there and do these things at yourself. So I never want money to be the barrier to anybody saying, I can't afford these technologies or the, this practice is you can do this too. And if you do have the means and you do want the support and guidance, absolutely. It's a faster in a, in a, in a, 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 a viable approach to be in community of other people that are doing it because not every one of our families are going through this work or facing it. So being in an environment where healing is occurring is, is really important to me. So, you know, I love the technologies. I love all of them. There's this one device called the A Mortal Chamber that is looking at your energy. It is, you know, necessarily changing it. You are breathing hydrogen and oxygen. You are getting the music and the breath work and the the near and infrared lights, the amp coil, the PEMF. So if you have these smaller centers, how about that device that can do eight things at once? And, you know, so it's just like, wow. And, and these just little charging pads that get on there and put your feet on there and your cellular health, your energetic being is the, the future is so amazing in what can be done energetically, emotionally to tap to that internal and, and physical practices that many are familiar with. Wonderfully stated. I also agree that frequency is the future mm -hmm. and our counterparts in Europe are way, have been way ahead of us. Uh, one of the piece of technology that I use to measure the human biofield, cellular dual output is the BioWell, which you probably have and have heard about. I love this idea of these chambers that are stacking all sorts of wonderful mm -hmm. things. Uh, I've, I've used hyperbaric chambers that do that as well. And I really feel a difference with that. So you mentioned a couple of really, really great things here. You talked about the hero's journey, working with a practitioner that's either going through the hero's journey. I feel like I'm in that like last quadrant <laughs> of the hero's journey myself. And also someone that looks radiant themselves. Um, just yesterday, I was doing a fi family Bible reading at the end of our, our wonderful family dinner. And I, I can't remember the scripture exactly, but it was when you follow the words of the Lord, your eyes will radiate. Now, how I interpreted this is when you are living a purpose-filled life, and you are here to do maybe what you predecided or chose to do and, and you're actually doing it, you're going to have more, more radiance and more sparkle and more light and more love in your eyes. And one of the things I'm becoming fastidious about is who I have on the show. If, if I get you know, vibes from somebody, I'm using my internal discernment as an empath myself. I won't have people on the show that I don't think they're a good human mm -hmm. or talk about technologies that I don't feel like the people that are the CEOs, whatever, behind the companies are doing good things. So that's really important for you to know about me. And I'm sure J.R. Burgess, you're the same way. It's, it's not mm -hmm. about just, okay, this technology works. It's also who's behind the technology? What's the frequency behind the technology? What's the intention behind the technology? Because some of these health tracking technologies, one in particular from France that just came out last year, it's a essentially like a brain training health tracking technology. A couple of years ago, I heard, uh, I love to listen to what's going on in you know, military intelligence world, because a lot of times biohacking tech comes from NASA, it comes from military, and this stuff's been studied for decades, and then it makes its way into the consumer market. So it was postulated a couple of years ago, then in a couple of years, there would be uh, basically a consumer brain training device that could essentially wipe memories. So 
And this was postulated to happen in France. And what they were doing was mice were going through mazes. And then while they slept and they were using specific technology, it was like men in black situation. When the mice woke up, they then forgot how to do the maze. So you have to be very careful with some of these health tracking pieces of technologies yeah. that can send and receive signals. You got to know who's behind the company, what's happening to your data, and what are potentially some underlying agendas. So with Aura Ring, if I ever used to wear it, which I don't actually wear mine anymore, it would always be on airplane mode. I do prefer the eight sleep right now for tracking, and then I sleep in EMF protective blankets and clothing. Uh, but you have to be really careful with some of this this brain stuff. I really like Brain Tap. Patrick Porter from Brain yep, Tap. Is that? Oh, I love him so much. <laughs> what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, and, and I want to add to that because no matter who you talk to, they're going to have to give you what their perspective of the world is. And I love how you, you said you tap into your feelings, your emotion. Once we can get a little bit out of the head and into the heart, our body, our intuition is something as a skill that can be built upon that. And I don't like talking bad about anything, but since you brought this up, this is an important as you navigate this emotional, energetic and, and vibrant, you know, frequency space is there's a, a religion out there that has a device that can take you right back to those past emotions and everything. And I'm sure it changes a lot of people's lives. But for me, there was a, a component of, of when I, I, I go to learn from as many protective or many environments, cultures, masterminds as possible. And I feel what feels good to me. And it felt like there was an element of control or rules. And that never has resonated with my soul. I believe in sovereignty and personal choice in only providing good things for the world. And even my wife felt that intuition right from the beginning, even though there's probably a lot to learn. But then on the other side of when I've gone through that, I mentioned that plant medicine journey, the feeling of going with that and knowing their intentions and the, the intermingling of the, the masculine and feminine and in choice is like, okay, this feels good for me and, and being able to be in alignment. And we have to, to first trust ourselves and, and learn to, and that's such an important part. So many of these, I'd imagine that the, the intentions are good, but always learn to check in with yourself feel even when we're talking mindful eating and food and air and people um, your body has most of the answers as we develop that skills of what's good for you but but such an important part even with the practitioners selecting who's going to be in your your psyche or helping you guide you and, and and really read into that it's it's a beautiful skill to to continue to work on for each of us mm -hmm. i feel like this is something really important in the health tech space is really understanding what certain metrics and technologies and biofeedback principles could be used for good and then potentially not so good mm -hmm. and programming and emitting things and you know firing things up in the body and and creating this almost like this this uh, program to start up and this is something to really be important uh, we've already gone through a human bifurcation point over the last couple of years with choosing to do one thing or not choosing to do something. And then we have another one coming up, which is the transhumanism, human bifurcation point. So just, just anytime you see tech come out for tracking, mm -hmm. just pause and don't necessarily just jump on board, get that app on your phone. Mm -hmm. um, and things with sending or receiving do emit EMFs, which the more toxic you are, the more hypersensitive you are to EMFs that I actually found in my recent research. So speaking of locations, I have a question for you, because when you compare somewhere like West Palm Beach, which has about, you know, 300 cell towers in a three mile radius versus Beverly Hills, which has about 2100, which is three times the amount of um, 5G cell tower emitters, <laughs> they, they might be seeing more issues um, in that area with, with things, with their wellness. Where are you finding some of these top rated, successful and thriving clinics? Are they in pockets of certain cities where people might need care more than others because of things to do with their geography, economy, social dynamics, so stress, right? Behaviors, things like that. 
And do you think that these things play a role in successful locations? And successful locations is almost like where people need the help the most. Yeah, so it's a great question. And I believe the world is complex. Nature's somewhat complex. Our bodies are somewhat complex. Business is somewhat complex, meaning there's not one button for all people that always do things. And I want to go back to the first principle we, that we talked about, cause versus effect, is my clinic that I was partners in was in Waite Park, Minnesota. It's a $37,000 medium income area, an hour and a half west of Minneapolis. And we are the top volume stem cell center in the country. And when we brought in doctors to see it, they're like, how is this here and out there? I can only imagine if this was in New York City or LA or one of these hubs, not only how expensive it would be, but how impactful would it be? And what I believe to be the truth is we are still in control of the joystick. So if we are convicted that these modalities help people, we show up differently in every consult. If we are listening to people and provide safety and even how we're talking energy and vibration and frequency, if we show up in love and service versus frustrated in 10 minutes and I got to be on the go, that matters in the person's healing journey and outcome. So there's been numerous studies on this from emotional and frequency with prenatal twins um, or twins that went early versus this doctor would show up with this energy reading and data and just be in a state of love and go into the, to these rooms and be like, this is going to be beautiful, such a journey. And I can't wait to share the most magical situation of life with you. And these babies were going full terms, not changing their diet, not telling them anything, just being in connection and in love and creating safety changes the world for these patients. And then when you get results, the referrals happen and everybody tells everybody and the ripples continue. So these are all things that we actually control in our joystick. And are we educating and showing up and connecting? Are we in love and abundance or scarcity and fear in that survival mode? So I want everyone listening to really take the joystick. And yes, doing your homework, that other external factor, I'm not denying that being in a good area with clean water and clean air and, and wind if we're having a healing center. So that's what we talked about our staff meeting here the other day. We're forming a new team and mission and there's a little bit of, of conflict in the office and everything. And it's just like, we are in a healing environment. We must be able to communicate, connect. So when these people come in here, they're feeling love and connection and vibration. And if we're not doing the work ourselves, it's it, not that we can't be helpful. It's just, we're really trying to put the most good in the world it's like we must embody this. So that is that consciousness, that hero's awakening that I invite all of us to continue to focus on us in the magic unfolds step by step by step as long as we make ourselves number one here. So the patients need safety. We need safety. Connection, being in people rowing in the right direction, being able to listen to somebody that like we just talked and being fulfilled. Does your heart sing for this? If you're burnt out and you're not liking your model of care, your soul is telling you this is a it's time for the next chapter of your book. And, and let's just move to that with grace and ease. And as long as you can put food on the table, you'll be all right. And, and then start this journey. And, and that's to me is you're not alone. Our sis, whatever you believe, God, the universe, our ancestors. They're right here cheering you on. And I was abandoned as a child and didn't have the emotions met. But going through the, this healing journey is they're right here right now. And you're not alone. And if you're feeling alone, the thing to go do is connect. Find your community. Find your home. Go serve. Go do those things. Do the opposite. And I'm not saying you can't feel what you're needing to feel. But then it's forward and up. That's the action step where we each have to grab our controller and go change the game. Oh, I love that. I love what you're doing. And I love just knowing that this is your, your behavioral thought process and system behind what you're doing. And this is really important. And one of the reasons, just to kind of go back to my previous question here, mm -hmm. the reason I ask about location being important for successful clinics, meaning there's more sick people in certain areas, 
is that certain cities and states have varying degrees of heavy metals in the air. Most of heavy metal in the body accumulation comes from the air and contaminants in the water, colder weather and less sunshine that impact toxicity levels. So what I'm bringing forth in this paper is depending on where a practitioner or a clinic is to really have an enhanced understanding of some of the things that the population in that community may be a little bit more predisposed to. And that could take additional, I, I don't even know who's teaching this stuff right now. It's almost like having a personal interest in actually looking. And the reason why this was um, essentially triggered in me was I was reviewing Health Canada statistics. So Stats Canada every year publishes mortality rates by type. And so I was looking at the year 2019 and there was in 2019 compared to previous like six years, mortality rates by type of unknown cause doubled. Hmm. This was the, the most significant mortality rate by type increase. This was a signal. So obviously sought um, clarification on what exactly this is. It's simply death of unknown cause before someone gets a diagnosis. Autoimmune stuff can be lumped in there as well. So we are seeing huge signals in the Canadian population, which actually has higher, quote unquote, restrictions on foods and ingredients in skincare and things that are used in industrial processes than the U.S. And we're seeing this in, in the year 2019 to 2020. And no, that didn't include like respiratory viruses or other things. Um, so that was really interesting. So I think to for clinics to know that mm -hmm. more environmental toxins are prevalent, uh, especially with electromagnetics, the more toxic you are, the more sensitive you are going to be with that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, Rachel. And it comes down to serve a need. And if your area, everybody's familiar for the most part with the Aaron Brockovich story, like that area has a different need. And for me, if I'm personally looking at me, I, I didn't stretch much growing up. So it led to far more physical injuries. So each person that comes through you, if your symptoms are activated or you're dealing with autoimmune responses, your need for clean environment is going to be more specific versus somebody that's built the protection, the resilience, the, the body. And, you know, so knowing the area, knowing where each person comes in, how to support their environment, it's one of the biggest. And Rachel mentioned at the beginning, the EMF blocking rooms, the Wi-Fi is turning into airplane mode, not having your aura ring on. If you're activated, the more you can do with the things that you can control, that's going to support your body, your being, um, your vehicle, that's what I call my body, my vehicle here to, to have the fuel or the resources or the protection it needs. So we, we, we can't ignore that the way that previous versions of healthcare has. Um, and this is a relevant topic for everybody to consider. And especially if we look at our water in our area, it's not very good right off the Mississippi. And we just had a, a train or, or a, a toxic spill at a nuclear plant in Monticello, Minnesota. So like that area, just like what happened in Ohio is going to be a different ballgame, but so many people don't have any idea. So as practitioners, how do we do relevant press releases or education or things that address these component? Because your everyday MDs and conventional models aren't. It's the integrated practices, whether you're a dermatologist or aesthetic or a functional practice, these, this is where integrated care belongs where there's actually time, space, and people investing in their health. You have the ideal patients right in front of you that care about their health. So this topic is very, very important in things that you can provide. Love it. How are you doing for time? We've gone a little bit over. Mm -hmm. We need to wrap up. Are you okay for a few more minutes? Yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so there's a couple more things I am really excited to ask you about. Let's get into some free stuff and potentially even some controversial stuff mm -hmm. that's happening. And I think that these are good things to talk about because I'm seeing more and more of my friends and colleagues access some of these different types of care and uh, medications and such. So let's start with the free stuff. What can we do for free today to reduce toxins at home and in our environment 
And then how can we work with clinics to move further for detoxing and metabolic support? Yeah. So I love that you asked the category. I always try to educate the best that I can on things that people can do in their own home for free. And that's most of the, like when I'm helping a practitioner, I call it women's and men's health. What is the things that we want our patients to know that a lot of people can agree on breathing, exercise, nutrition, environment, cleaning up, um, things that we, we also can do. Then there's things that you can invest in, whether like we're talking about environment, the air doctor, or the Berkey water filter, or reverse osmosis, all those things that we can invest in, or supplements that can help detoxify and, and clean the system. Then when do we need to go to the clinic to get either detect what is going on with heavy metals in our body, energetic reading. So that's the framework. So for free of clearing your environment is smoke. Smoke is a, is a cleaning agent, whether it's sage, whether it's plants around your environment, whether it's a cedar tree, um, things that are in your environment, mapacho, tobacco, depending on how you want to get it, that's not got all the, you know, processed chemicals and cigarette, cigarettes can be a, a very good cleansing agent. So those are, are things that we can do for free when we're looking to cleanse the mind. It's prayer and gratitude and abundance. So how do we bring that in? And when we're thinking too far in the future, how do we get into the presence? Because that's where action happens. Or if we're living in the past, how do we forgive, cut the cords or let go so we can detoxify the mind? um, and, and be present in our action. So those are free little bitty things that start to stack up and then in, in investing into, like you mentioned, those other devices, the, the PEMF, the certain paints in your, your, your rooms for EMFs, certain supplements that help detoxify the body a little bit more. So maybe that those help, um, give you some ideas of, of what you can do for absolutely for free. Oh, I love this. I love that you did mention a little bit of plant medicine yeah. and you were talking about tobacco. I've heard uh, another individual recently talk about how there's actually some benefit to tobacco. We're not talking cigarettes. We're talking mm -hmm. about tobacco itself. And I happen to know in the Amazonian culture, they create a product called hoppe mm -hmm. or snuff. Mm -hmm. And in my understanding, it is actually used alongside ayahuasca ceremonies to like essentially bring you back. Ground you in. Absolutely. Yes. And now what I also understand with this particular type of product called Hoppe or Amazonian snuff, it also can elicit purging in some individuals and in mm -hmm. others, not so much. So it's, it's fascinating to see and hear other people have different experiences with it. They want to like cough, they feel like throwing up, they get GI upset. Or what I notice in those who are more pure, who have done the body, mind, spirit, energy work, who are routinely detoxing their air, water, lighting, electromagnetics and cleansing. By the way, find all my favorite stuff for your home mm -hmm. on my favorites page on the website. Those that are more pure and seem to have a less full toxic bucket, which is otherwise known as oxidative stress status, mm -hmm. they don't have those types of purge reactions. Yes. What do you think is going on there? I'm, I'm laughing because this is the experience that I just went through. So, you know, I've gone through this work through working it myself and I've worked in ketamine clinics, helping them integrated. So like, that's one of these aspects of mind, body, energy things. And I've gone to the indigenous cultures over the last three years to learn, practice, be a part of it. And now um, I don't serve the medicine myself, but I have people that I, I very much trust in South America and even here in the United States, depending on what helps anybody feel safe. And this last weekend in Big Sur, California, we did a, a doctor's medicine retreat. And it, it came down to, there is hoppe, which just like you meant, and that's a medicine that I use regularly that has the tobacco, other herbs from the um, Amazonian rainforest. And that basically is grounding and clearing. And depending on, just like you said, I've seen people puke because they need to. I see people just drop right into their body and all the stress and immediately get into parasympathetic mode where you can actually heal or connect and go a little bit further in your meditation. So a great thing. Um, 
that paired with ayahuasca, which was happening. And then after we did combo, so which is a, a frog. And basically that is what they say is one of the most powerful detoxes in the world. So I did it two years ago. And what came up in the bucket was all that you're talking, dark bile, disgusting. It is almost like attacking each other at the end of it. And this was the second time I've done it. And at the end of the, the three-day retreat, I did it. And there was three of us that did it. And the, the first guy, it was pretty hard on him. The second guy um, was me. And the bucket was, other than just a slight tint of like dehydrated pee, it was like, wow, I had made some major progress over the last two and a half years. And then the, the third guy that hadn't really gone too far down the journey yet, it had all sorts of, of challenges and, and look in there and, and complications. So you explained it so well as it's, this is a process. And to me, it's like, I'm looking at it. I'm facing it. It's okay. I'm safe. I truly am when I'm around the right people and in that know how to work that. And then, okay, step by step. But then most people leave that. They're right back to the toxins. They're right back to the foods. And it's just like, if I've detox, now I'm what they call as I, as I train and go through dietas is I'm learning to constantly be in dieta, meaning Yes, once in a while, I will choose that food or the, the thing that has the sugar in there. But the majority of time, I'm living in alignment, how I show up in business, how I show up in front of my children, how I show up in every conversation right here. I'm not hiding. A secret to me is not alignment of, of soul, spirit, and body. Not that everybody's ready for these conversations or do I bring it to somebody that their belief system or nervous system isn't there. But anytime that I can be in full alignment and share openly or my experience and how I'm around my kids, even this is a conversation of my kids. They know I'm going to Peru and doing this work. And it is, hey, daddy's gone. And this last time around before I went, it was just like, what have you loved that daddy's changed over the last two years and since the last year? And what would you like daddy to work on before you going here? And my daughter said, nothing this time. And you're showing up there and oh, so much versus the year before. I don't want you and your mother fight anymore. I want this or that. So this is a process, a hero's journey. And these medicines can clear detox. And there's ways to do it with integrative medicine, IVs, heavy metals. There's ways to do it in your home. And there's ways to do it with the sacred plants and spirits. And, and it comes down to where are you at? Is your strategy working? And if not, be open to change because you deserve health, happiness, abundance, alignment, and you have the joystick and we can do this. Beautifully stated. And everyone, of course, has their own comfort levels with what type of plant medicine journey that they're wanting to do. Um, there's also some other options on the market, which is essentially an Amazonian beef extract with oxytocin so that you don't have the mess with hoppe in the nose because it's basically like a dark tobacco that you inhale and it passes through the blood brain barrier and so there there are those types of options as well uh, when you mentioned spirits alcohol gets the nickname of spirits so if you're moving through something if you have just the sniggle that you need to improve an aspect of your health body mind spirit and energy don't go for the alcohol. Mm -hmm. That could uh, definitely make things worse and actually add to your level of toxicity. So I find this fascinating talking to individuals like yourself who are able to be open and honest. And uh, if you meet with me one-on-one, -on -one, mm -hmm. I will be very open and transparent more than I will publicly here on the show with some of the modalities that have really helped me, especially over the last three months of completely rearranging my life mm -hmm. and doing it in as healthy of a way as possible and doing some serious detoxing. I didn't know just how much that home was contributing to heavy metal, pesticide and mold toxicity. And I'm telling you, I had no symptoms mm -hmm. aside from central nervous system dysregulation which was also one of the reasons why I was doing so much cold therapy to master that, which uh, later came in extremely handy. Being able to be in any situation, remain cool, calm, and collected, cool as a cucumber, no matter what life decided to throw my way. So the emptier your toxic bucket is, 
the more resilient and able you will be to overcome obstacles. Um, the better you're going to be able to show up for yourself, the more beautiful and radiant you'll be, the less likely you are to have skin issues, melasma, breakouts, hair loss. If you're going through stressful times and stress happens, it's, it's a part of life. It's just obstacles, tests, all these things that we have to negotiate through and navigate through just to do it like what you said with greater ease, with greater grace and ease. Uh, lastly, you mentioned something called ketamine. And I actually had a friend recently request to use this during a surgery and they had a wonderful experience. And it was almost as if the, the surgeon that was performing it also really liked the mm -hmm. experience and being able to communicate uh, with who they're performing surgery with, because uh, there are some issues with general anesthetic and even the concept of soul loss and some things that go along with that. So this is a little bit more fringe here. Um, tell us a little bit about how ketamine is being used in clinics, surgeries, and more. So on the the pain side, so this has been used for years, even in the Vietnam War, you're able to disassociate from your body and go to more what I would call uh, the field, the energy outside of consciousness into the subconscious. And essentially, it's a, it's a great pain reliever uh, for people that have suffered from chronic pain. So we're seeing a large influx into pain management clinics, um, into surgeries. I chose that as well because that's what opened me up four years ago. I had a, a series of, of six ketamine treatments into where I saw a lot of my earlyhood struggles and challenges and experience that I had. And it began me on my actually true uh, emotional, then later spiritual journey in, in this path. Um, it doesn't have the same spiritual component that maybe some of the other plants that we mentioned, psilocybin, ayahuasca, um, hape, some of those things, but it still can have the same effect within the body. I'm also seeing a, a large influx of this into aesthetics or dermatology clinics as we're working on the external or also learning to love thyself um, in going through that emotional process. So this is to me, the integration of aesthetic and dermatology practice is of the future. And you may feel like, well, I don't have that background. That's why learn about it, research it, begin that journey of fact finding, seeing who else is doing this. Um, there's a lot of ways to get there again, through breath work, through EMDR therapies, through, you know, meditation, through the plants, um, for you to experience your own emotions and spirit body, um, in a way that's comfortable with you, but this is happening. And same thing like surgeries is too many people. When I first got into regenerative medicine, Oh, I don't believe in stem cells or PRP or this or that or surgery. And it's like the integration now is just like when I tore my Achilles tendon four years, three and a half years ago, it's, I had surgery with stem cells at the same time. And I recovered in six months versus 18 months with my others the years before. So when people get out of potentially, this is the only way to do things and start thinking like, how do we continue to take data and research to do things just differently than what we did before to get a better outcome? We'll see that. So you could have a social worker, you could have a nurse, you could have um, a psychologist or a psychiatrist working in tandem with your office, or you can integrate that as a component in people going down this space are now, and I'm, I'm even coaching at a psychedelic coaching training next week here in Salt Lake. There's people that want to be the, the, the space holders or the facilitators of the health coach that are trying to get into these clinics because they want to be a part of these models that truly develop whole being care. So future's here and it's not just down the road. It's like, if this is resonating at all, let's have a conversation and, and figure out how you can take a step or two to begin your fact finding journey. Um, and I won't get too woo, but, but it's coming. And in a year, the whole world and healthcare system is shifting into these more integrative models of care. So find what resonates with you and, and, and start reaching They're They're out there. Oh, absolutely. So we've seen this happen in the past. It's just parallels, right? So for myself, the care I had been getting after car crashes, it just, it wasn't doing anything. So then I sought out, you know, something else in the U.S., right? Testing, going to be getting some other things um, as well to support me. And 
the thing about this stuff is I did an interview with a, uh, a one-on-one session for a gentleman, Matt, and he said, I want to look like Tom Cruise. What, he's, what is he mm-hmm. doing? You know, if, if, if I had all the money in the world or you had all the money in the world, what would you do to stay young? And I quite frankly said to him, it's not about having the money. It's about the access. It's about the who's who, who's really skilled at doing this and the other thing. It's the network. It's the access. Because a lot of the top practitioners that I know about, they don't advertise. It's just all word of mouth. So by tuning in to here on the show, you're getting access to J.R. Burgess. You're getting access to myself and other speakers. And we are really well connected. And it's great to work with clients behind the scenes on one-on-ones and be able to say, hey, this is someone who's really skilled at this or the other thing you know, check them out. This could be a resource. That's what I'm trained to do as a nurse. <laughs> and in Canada, we pass the buck. If someone doesn't have an answer, they get passed to something else. And then it's this, this pass the buck. However, in our communities, it's no, we know this person is going to solve the, the thing. And it's not a pass the buck. It's, you know, let's help Pardon find me. someone else that can support you. <laughs> Absolutely. And you, you brought such an important po- point is like somebody may say they don't have the financial resources or the, the who, you know, so the who is right here as, as you bring on brilliant guests that could connect um, the what if we don't have the financial resources, then it's just like the old days. It's just like you have a skill set of value and most of these integrated practices could benefit from a blog writer, a content writer. Um, a front desk check-in person, a system automator, you know, trade is, is what most practitioners that are running independent practices would welcome if you're really wanting to experience or apprentice or, or be involved with this. So do your best to understand that there's so much free education out there for you to discern. There are the ways to go gain access to these things by trading your time and service and, and gifts to the world. And then ultimately, you know, finding the resources, what look closely in the mirror, what are you investing in? Is it eating out? Is it gambling? Is it alcohol? Like we talked about that won't get you to where you're going. There's actually vices, beliefs, or habits that are preventing the next level of consciousness, health, that we're going to have to exchange something. We can't climb the ladder without letting go of the rung before or going and trying new strategies, doing that. So be very open to we just got to turn the chapter. Something's got to go. Something's new to create the space for this amazing opportunity to deliver this type of care or to be on our own journeys. Beautiful. And let's not make it, you know, too amazing, full of amaze mm-hmm. and you have to go this way and that way. Let's have a very clear cut, have a clear strategy. I love this idea talking about uh, basically like systems and trading and things like that. I think that um, we're going to see a lot more of this. Yeah. Um, you talked about so many great things and it's interviewing, interviewing you for the second time, J.R. Burgess, I've seen your growth. Mm-hmm. The way that you show up is in a very beautiful, full, light, bright, radiant, discerning, empathic way. So thank you so much for the work that you're doing uh, behind the scenes. Closing words. And where can people learn more about your work and legacy? Thank you. Closing words is you are so important. You are so loved. Um, we're here for a reason. And, you know, recognizing that, that you are here for a reason and how important you are. Like I said, right now, for me, it's presence and intention that every conversation matters so much, um, whether it's listening or providing perspective, or asking somebody, how do I support? And doing that with self, like that is uh, the biggest lesson for me right now, um, is being intentional in everything that I do. Everything else is conscious or by design or by the nervous system going, going, going. And, you know, my friend Josh Trent says, like, if you can breathe, you can choose. So knowing that we can be in cause in everything that we do, and and I fully believe that, 
And, you know, if people are looking to learn and, and to get into this energy world of detecting it, we have at our Energy for Life centers a nest scan. So this kind of looks at many different aspects to where you can get, get, get an objective energetic read of where you're at with the environment, the detox. It's not the functional lab test, but this is a free scan where you can basically jump on and, and see where you're at. So I'd be happy to offer that. My, my email is jr at bevital.com. Um, and essentially, my other website is jrburgessconsulting.com, where, you know, if you're looking to be pointed in any right direction, I have a few books on there. And it's a previous chapter. I'm moving into more of this license and franchising and connecting people. But it's still um, a lot of resources and a lot of doctors that I've, I've, I believe in um, our resources are on there. So thank you so much, Rachel, for the amazing work that you're doing. Um, it's an honor to be on here a second time. You vibrate, you radiate, and you're doing um, such beautiful and good work. It's it's an honor to be connected to you. And um, the, even last, like you mentioned, my growth is being in your presence in um, in October and just truly feeling your heart. It was all in my head years ago, but now I can really feel people's vibration and heart it happened in there. And it was so strong and beautiful. And I know the impact you have on people and those that are in your proximity. So thank you. Thank you, J.R. Bridges. Mm -hmm. And actually in October when I saw you and at that event, it really hit me what I love to teach which isn't just to look pretty and have great hair, skin, nails. It's to show up at an event and have people be drawn to you and notice you and want to connect with you for all the right reasons and how to cultivate that. And that's radiance. And we can all be that. There's definitely some things to do with, you know, how we carry ourselves, the energetics that we have in ourselves and through interactions. So thank you for sharing that. And seeing that, uh, because when we have more humans that are having more beautiful interactions with yourself, people, places, and things, this is how we make the world a better place. Mm -hmm. So everybody, learn more about J.R. Burgess and what he's up to. Learn more in the description of this episode and at jrburgessconsulting.com. Have a wonderful, sorry, not wonderful. <laughs> uh, have a beautiful, high vibe, radiant day. We don't want to be wondering about anything and we don't want to be cruising through a maze, right? With amazing, the word choices, I'm definitely being very specific. But be radiant and make good decisions to support your body, mind, spirit, energy with some of the things that we shared in today's episode. We got really deep. Let me know what you mm -hmm. thought about today's about today's episode. Send me an email, info at rachelvarga.ca. Learn more on the website. Check out the description of this episode. And we will see you again here on the Rachel Varga podcast. Thank you.